Hello. We're, we're going to get started here. Wel welcome everyone to Grand Rounds. Uh, we're going to get started just to make sure we have time for everyone to present. Today is, uh, is uh, another one of our, our uh, presentations from our medical students. And we really enjoy these presentations. And so we're, we're, gr we're grateful to you medical students for uh, taking the time to do this and, and to do a good job. Uh, today we have three presenters. And so I'm going to be working to kind of keep things moving along to make sure that everyone has time uh, to present. Oops. The Just to let all of you know the format, what we tell the students, we, give, we tell them to take about 10 minutes to present and then about five minutes for questions um, and discussion, which is really helpful. And I, we really appreciate all of you that participate in that. And then uh, we move, we'll move on to the next person. And because we only have three presenters today, we might have a little more time for discussion with each case. So um, I'll just kind of move along. So don't, don't feel bad if, I, if we're, we're moving on without getting to everyone's comments. Um, today, we're starting with uh, David. <laughs> Uh, Massop, and he's from, so got a little history on him. He grew up in Des Moines, Iowa, went to undergraduate at St. Louis University, and then is at Creighton for uh, medical school. Right now he's here working with Dr. Shakur and, and really enjoying it. And today he's going to be presenting on a subretinal mass in an in, in immunocompromised patient. Okay, so as he said, my name is David. Um, from Creighton, presenting retinal mass and immunocompromised patient. Appreciate the opportunity to be here and do this with you guys. Um, so here we go. So a uh, 49-year-old female, she's complaining of a spot in her vision. Uh, spot has been in her left field of vision in the right eye. Um, it began five days ago. It doesn't move. She has no complaints in the left eye. Um, Ten days ago, however, she started developing headaches and a red right eye. Uh, she saw her neighbor, who's an optometrist, um, and she told us that she had been diagnosed with pink eye. Uh, she was placed on dexamethasone, which relieved the red eye and the headache. Um, she then followed up with him again uh, eight days later or two days ago. Uh, she was diagnosed with iritis and switched to prednisolone every one hour. Um, he then saw her again the next day uh, and saw a lesion on the retina. Uh, so sh she was referred to a local retina specialist. Retina specialist saw it and sent it to Moran. So then we kind of pick it up um, as seeing the patient later that day. Uh, so her ocular history, unremarkable. She does have bilateral LASIK. Um, notably, she has multiple myeloma. Um, it's been in remission for a year. Um, she was diagnosed about five years ago. She had three bone marrow transplants. Um, she also has a central line in place that'll come into play a little bit later. Um, she has a couple allergies, no family history. Um, she is on a maintenance chemo of pal, pomalidom, uh, shoot, uh, pomal, pomalidomide, which is a cousin of thalidomide, um, and then dexamethasone to control her multiple myeloma. She's also on prophylactic acyclovir and levothyroxine. Um, no high-risk activity for STDs, uh, social history. She's at home with her spouse. No cigarettes, uh, tobacco, uh, drugs, or alcohol. Um, she does have an outdoor cat. She does garden. She's never been outside the U.S. and she does, um, has been to states that have various exotic fungi. So, teaser. Um, so her review of systems is grossly negative, uh, except for the headache um, that's kind of been on and off and then the right eye symptoms, which we talked about. So her visual acuity is pretty good in both eyes. Pressure is good, no APDs. Um, she does have a little injection and chemosis. She does have a little cell, and then she does have some vitritis, but pretty mild. Um, and then on looking at the fundus, there is a lesion uh, inferior temporal adjacent to the macula, but it was a difficult view. Um, so our differential diagnosis at this point is really broad, um, but infectious um, and malignancy are pretty concerning given her history of multiple myeloma, and then her semi-immunocompromised state due to the multiple myeloma and then some of the medication. So a tap and inject was performed that day. Uh, she got the two antivirals in Clinda, um, and then the sample was sent to the lab and had um, the various viruses run on it and then Toxo. Um, and then she was told to come back and follow up the next day. We got these pictures the next day. Um, you can see something kind of brewing in the uh, right eye. Doesn't look good. Here's a little better picture of it. 
So you can tell it's a subretinal lesion because the vasculature courses up on top of it. There's dot blot hemorrhages in it, and then there's also uh, a larger hemorrhage along the interior border. Uh, so here's a montage, just kind of pretty. Um, so again, the same day we got the pictures, varicella came back negative, uh, remaining labs still pending. Started the uh, what will become more and more extensive uh, lab workup. Um, got an MRI of the orbit and then scheduled a diagnostic vitrectomy uh, with a subretinal and vitreous biopsies for the following day and then sent her over to the hospital to be admitted um, by the bone marrow transplant team. But again, her vital signs were stable and her review systems were negative. So she's not, she's not, she doesn't showcase any systemic infection or anything like that. Um, so here's the MRI we got. There's the mass, um, intraocular mass you can see in the uh, right eye. Um, and then interestingly, she also has a seven millimeter ring enhancing lesion within the left parietal lobe. So she's got two lesions within the CMS system. Um, so then you look downstream, see what's going on in the heart. And then she has this um, venous catheter that we talked about in her surgical history. And then <coughs> she also has um, this irregular mixed density mass. It's probably a calcified thrombus, but she does kind of have something going on there. So it was a little bit concerning. People were kind of dismissing it, but it was there. So, um, so then the next day she has a uh, pars plane of vitrectomy, um, get the subretinal biopsy and vitreous biopsies, then do an endo laser around the mass um, to seal it and prevent detachment and then um, gas also, uh, and then she got um, broad coverage um, for any antimicrobials, um, AMP, VANC, CEPH, Casadime, and Quinda. And then here's a little video so you can see um, the diathermy. There's three spots that speak with point fiddles. So here's one, here's two, and here's three, and then he's taking the um, uh, subretinal uh, aspirate out from underneath, and then he'll go over here to this one. So there's that. And then here's uh, lasering around the lesion. Um, Dr. Shakur wanted me to point out how fast he is at this. So <laughs> all done. Um, so then um, we, so we got those samples. Uh, we also got blood cultures and then a spinal tap um, and then started heavy duty and, uh, empiric treatment. So this is the scorched earth technique. Um, it kind of looks like Corona Arto was there last weekend. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but uh, so miropenem, viraconazole, bank, and uh, sulfadiazine and pyrimethamine to cover those um, organisms according to infectious disease. Um, so post-op, she looked good, retina was attached. Uh, Follow-up, the mass was improving uh, five days out, um, but the remainder of the exam was unchanged. So we really haven't changed a whole lot other than she's just been getting these antibiotics. Um, in the meanwhile, we're trying to figure out what's going on, and we've got all these labs, um, and everything's come back negative. The CRP is slightly elevated at 1.5, um, but other than that, not too much. So our differential diagnosis, uh, it's not looking too good right now. It's pretty beat up. But uh, so we're still waiting for the PAM PCR to come back, um, kind of the magic bullet. Uh, and uh, at um, post op day five, so the same day we looked at the retina and it's the lesion was improving. Um, her uh, white count had been trending down. She was have leukopenia. Um, so we stopped all the antibiotics, especially the sulfas, can cause um, leukopenia. Uh, she was switched to CEP and metronidazole. Um, and then to follow up on that uh, TTE, we got a TEE with a bubble to look for a PFO, possible um, track from the right side of the heart up to the uh, CNS. Um, but she doesn't have any symptoms of endocarditis. So again, it's not really fitting the picture. Um, so she's discharged the next day after the TEE on uh, ceftriaxone and metronidazole. And, um, her first day out of the hospital, we get a call that says it came back positive for nocardia. So um, nocardia is an aerobic gram positive, weekly acid fast. 
uh, branch control measures bacteria that's found in soil or in, um, so gardeners would have exposure like our patient, but I think everybody pretty much has exposure. Uh, pulmonary and cerebral infections um, are the most common and, and they need to usually be in an immunocompromised patient, usually more immunocompromised than our patients. Um, ocular infections are extremely rare. They are a, um, usually due to surgical and accidental trauma. You get seeding of the uh, orbit. Uh, cornea is the most, uh, most common site um, and just show you how rare it is. Even with uh, nocardiobacteremia, only three to five percent get a focus in the eye. Um, so treatment, uh, first line is the sulfas, uh, so the sulfadiazine, which she was already on, the bolded one she was already on, um, it's good CNS penetration. Uh, elsewhere in the body, you want to use Bactrim. Um, then you can see the second lines, including uh, linazolid, and then meropenem, impenem, ceftriaxone, and amikacin. Again, the bolded she's already been getting, so when we saw her back in follow-up, the lesion had improved, presumably because she was getting three antibiotics that worked with them. Um, so there she is, she received those. Um, ID recommended continuing outpatient as ceftriaxone and then linazolid until her white count increased. Um, then she could be switched to Bactrim. Uh, imaging, we need to get a CT of the chest to find the source of the lesion. It's a hematogenous <coughs> spread. Um, there's, it's most likely in the lungs. And then get an MRI of the brain for follow-up um, of the abscess to make sure that's improving. So that's all I've got, There's, we're excited. And then thanks to Dr. Shakur and Zimmerman, not for sending me on this trip, but for helping me with this presentation. <laughs> Any questions? How much bolded Bactrim was she receiving? She was on uh, leucovorin, um, which is not folic acid, it's linic acid, and that's supposed to help with. Um, How much prior to using this? Uh, you mean prior to using this? Uh, this uh, a year ago, I was already on this for a few other things. Uh, you, no, two years ago. Uh, I think I should have done this in September. Um, uh, not off the top of my head, but it's my understanding of just PCR in general is that if it comes up positive, it's very strong.
Some of the studies were not in the best journals suggesting that we need to do it. 